Welcome back, my friends, to the show that never ends. I'm Gene Del Sala, president of Audioholics. And I'm Hugo Rivera, vice president of marketing. How are you, Gene? Hugo, I'm doing great, but before we begin this video, I always like to use that intro, Welcome Back, My Friends, as kind of a tribute to one of the progressive rock band greats in the 70s uh, called Emerson, Lake, and Palmer. And I do want to offer my condolences to the fans uh, for the loss of Keith Emerson, who took his own life uh, last mm -hmm. week. And feel really sad about that. I just wanted to bring that up and let you guys know that it is homage to ELP and we are thinking about them and we love the band and we're sorry for the loss to anyone that's involved with that. Excellent. So anyways, mm -hmm. on a positive note, what would you like to talk about today? Which one's the best center channel? Center channel design. So you want to figure out what's best to use in a home theater. Very important, the center channel, because that's really where the voices, you know, of whatever feature you're watching, that's where the voices come from. Yeah, and it's more than just vo vocals, actually. You get a lot of sound information coming out of the center channel. I think like over 40% of the soundtrack goes into the center. So you definitely want to choose a speaker that has similar output capabilities, bandwidth, and tonality as your main speakers. Okay, so when you pick your main speakers and you pick a speaker, let's say it has a woofer, mid, and tweeter, or two, two mid ranges in it, you want to kind of choose a speaker, a center channel that matches that, that maybe mm -hmm. doesn't have as much bass capability because you're going to want a bass managing the speaker, anyways. Mm -hmm. But you want to have similar mid and tweeter output capabilities. Exactly. And there's, you know, there's various kind of center channel designs. Um, the very basic center channel, if you want to get the perfect match of your front three speakers, you could use the same LCRs. You could use a two-way, which is just a, a six and a half inch, say, a six and a half inch mid-range and a tweeter. Mm -hmm. Two-way design, you could use that across the front three speakers. Mm -hmm. You could use an MTM, which is a mid-range tweeter mid-range. Now, normally we'd want to use those vertically mounted because they were designed to be vertically mounted speakers. Uh, MTM works best when it's vertical because it actually helps cancel some of the reflections from top to bottom Understood. and it keeps you, you know, it keeps everything integrated in its listening plane, mm -hmm. which is what it's meant to be from a vertical axis. Now when you turn it on its side, yes, you can get some lobing effects if you're way off axis because the distance between the two mid-ranges, the wavelengths start mattering as you get off axis and you get far enough away. Mm -hmm. Exactly. But the reason why we have alternatives to that, if you're sitting more than 30 degrees off axis, is they have three-way center channels now, and they can put a mid-range underneath the tweeter, and that restores the off-axis performance. Okay, perfect. But let's be realistic. You know, if you put up the article, like, we, we have an article that shows all the lobing problems with an MTM, but I also have an alternate article to that, and I show using very basic trigonometry, if you remember Sokotoa, I sure do. <laughs> <laughs> I basically show that in order for an MTM, um, let's assume a very well-designed MTM, okay, one that has a proper crossover, proper slopes, and it just works well. Let's assume ideal conditions. Ideal okay. conditions, okay. Mm -hmm. In order for you to really start getting real serious lobing problems, you got to sit a good 20 to 30 degrees off axis from it. And do the math, guys. If you're sitting, you know, if you put the center channel in, you're sitting 12 feet away, and you, and you go 30 degrees off axis, most people's rooms, they're small enough. You're going to want to sitting right up against the wall. You don't want to sit up against the wall to begin with anyways because now you're too close to a boundary. You're too close to a, to a surround speaker. You're not in a good location for bass. Mm -hmm. So in reality, MTMs can actually be a pretty viable option for most installations. Interesting, okay. And there's actually a variant to MTMs now. It's called a nested MTM where they put the tweeter a little higher and they bring the mids closer together so there's less acoustical interference off access. Well, that sounds perfect. That is a good compromise. Now, the problem I have with, with some of these, um, let's call them three-way designs, they're, the, they're a W, T, M, W, okay? So the tweeter and the mid-range are, are on a vertical plane mm -hmm. and the two woofers are on the side. The problem with some of those designs is they tend to use a very small mid-range. I've seen some that have maybe six and a half inch bass drivers and then they have like a three and a half or four inch mid-range. Now you're basically lowering the sensitivity to that mid-range and you're losing some dynamic capability in the speaker as opposed to using a traditional MTM with two six and a half inch drivers. Understood. So you gotta realize if you want this thing to play loud and you want it to keep up with your other channels, you gotta match sensitivity of your speakers and you gotta match output capabilities. That makes sense. 
Otherwise, your, your system is going to be unbalanced. Right. Now, there are some designs we would tell you to avoid, like the plague. Yes, why don't you go ahead and cover those, because we don't <laughs> want people to go near those. Of course, we cannot bra mention brand names or anything like no, that. No, we don't, we don't want to get into that, but I'll just tell you that the majority of legitimately well-engineered speakers don't do this, is they'll run a stack of woofers horizontally, <laughs> and then they'll throw a tweeter on each end of the cabinet. Yeah, if you see something like that, stay away. The problem with those kind of speakers is they're only good if you measure them on axis. So if you're sitting in the center row and you're sitting on direct axis of the tweeter, you'll probably be okay. Mm -hmm. But as soon as when you get a few degrees off axis, you get massive acoustical interference. It looks like a picket fence. Right. It's kind of similar to what comb filtering is, although comb filtering is generally used to describe a term when you have multiple sound, uh, discrete sources playing the same signal. In this case, we're just, we're just treating the speaker as its own source, but it has multiple um, you know, band drivers playing the same bandwidth. So basically, if you have no friends and you live alone, you could have one of these. Your single sweet spot is here. <laughs> right there. <laughs> Knowing that, guys, we really don't recommend that. I would stick with an MTM or I would stick with a three-way design, the WTMW, and Typically, if it has a good enough output in the mid-range area, you got to really check sensitivity and make sure it matches the speakers you're choosing. Excellent. Anything else, Jim? You know, I, I wrote down a couple of things to cover, but other than this, I would say um, make sure you calibrate. You know, after oh, yeah. you get it all done, make sure you calibrate. I, my own personal theater, I run my center channel about a dB hot, maybe a dB and a half sometimes because I have multiple rows. So I measure it in the front row and I make sure it's a little hotter than the, L, the left and right speakers because the center channel is lower to the ground so it doesn't have as much of a direct path to the listener, especially in the back row. Right. So I boost my center channel up a little bit so when you're in the back row, you don't feel like it got sucked out. That's about all I can say about it. I mean, just choose wisely, my friends. Awesome. Let us know what you guys are choosing too. Comment below. Let us know about that. And also, if you like this video, click like, share it with your friends. And until next time, keep, keep listening. listening.